Is that on? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that on? Good afternoon, Lighthouse members. As I stand here today, I want to thank everyone who responded to my mom minor emergency. For about a few weeks ago, we had to go to John Hopkins Hospital because she was told she had a tumor in her middle ear. She decided she did not want to go. She's too old to do all these things. And I said, God has done a lot for our family and I think you should go. I did not say much and I asked Pastor at the end of the service and he walked to my car and anointed her. We went to John Hopkins, we saw the specialist. We had some tests done and a week after we got the result that the tumor, she was seen before and after she had the MRI and some treatment that the tumor has now decreased. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Unfortunately for her, she has lost some of her hearing in that ear. But as I stand here, I said, I said to myself, it's always hard to be that health person in the family because everything that goes on, whether good or bad, most of the time bad, you have to be the one or I have to be the one that always have to stand firm. And I want to give God thanks because in spite of all that I do, I also was threatened two days ago. I was about to get up my bed to get ready to go to work. I worked the night shift. And as I sat up on the bed, I'll break it down in layman terms. I had double Charlie horses. I could not stand. The pain was radiating up my legs and it went up to my back. And as I was screaming on the top of my lungs, my mother came and she was a bit anxious. And I said, you will have to call 911. She said, for what? I said, I can't breathe. I am fainting. That has never happened to me before. And she kept saying, well, I'm not going to call. But I said, bring me some water and bring me some honey. She came and she brought it. And as I was sitting and I said, whatever it is <laughs> the enemy is trying to do, I will stand firm no matter what. I stood with my sister a few years ago when she was diagnosed with cancer. And God has blessed her healed her, and she's now living the legacy of giving God thanks. Amen. And as I continue to live my life, my intention is to never back down, no matter what. Um, as I sat here this morning, <laughs> it was a struggle for me because I'm saying, oh Jesus, please don't let this happen. I felt a leaning to me, and I nudged her, and she wasn't doing anything. Then I noticed she was clammy. Fortunately for me, <laughs> while Pastor was talking about the building fund, I had a mint in my hand, and I don't know, God, I thank you for not allowing me to put it in my mouth, because, with, because of that, I was able to put it in her mouth while she was going down. And so I just want to say, I thank God for, even though I'm not a, courageous person when it comes to public speaking. With the strength and teaching that I get from my dear pastor, I want to thank, stand here and say thank you to you, pastor, and for all who have prayed for me and all who assisted me this morning. It is my desire to continue to be strong and never back down when the devil Amen. tried to get me. Thank you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. God is a good God. Hallelujah. Thank God for what he is doing. Are you still doubting God that he's able? Oh, God. Just a couple of people here. Are you still doubting God that he's able? 
the true the tumor shrunk oh y'all lord let me because god is alive uh, some of you serving a dead god god bless you but there's some of us inside here we are serving a god who is alive in the face of adverse circumstances and adverse situation we still hold on to the to, to the, the horns of the altar knowing that our god is able hallelujah Glory be to God. Yes. It's been a long, long morning, but thank God for his presence. Go with me to Isaiah chapter 43, verses 1 through 7. I'll let you sit and I'll read verses 1 through 7. And I'm starting a sermon, a new sermon series. But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, he that formed thee, O Israel, Fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. Verse number two. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I give Egypt for thy ransom. Ethiopia and Saba for thee. Since thou wast precious in my sight, thou hast been honorable, and I have loved thee. Therefore will I give men for thee and people for thy life. Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east and gather, th gather thee from the west. I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, give not back. Keep not back. Bring my sons from far and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Even everyone that is called by my name. For I have created him for my glory. I have formed him. Yea, I have made him. Amen. Father, bless your word today to your people. Open our understanding that we would understand your word. We pray that you would touch feeble lips of clay, that they would speak as the oracles of God. Continue to anoint us for your glory and for your good pleasure. And to you we give all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. And praise the Lord. I'm not too sure how long this series is going to go because I intend to, to really do justice to the entire text and, uh, and to go with it as long as the Lord would have us to go with it. We completed the last sermon series. And what was the last sermon series? What was the last sermon series? What are, you what are you building with? And what was the series before that one? Is there anything too hard for the Lord to do? And today we want to start this new sermon series. You are never alone in the battle. You are never alone in the battle. Hallelujah. You are never alone in the battle. Last week I spoke to Sister Kwamina and I said to Sister Kwamina, how are you doing? How are things with you? And you know, the enemy came against her four times with cancer. And God has been good to her. She, God kept her with the first attack. When the second one came, God did the same thing. The third one came, God did the same thing. And then a fourth one came. And she's still here today. Yeah. And she said to me, Pastor, I am not, you're not on the chemo. She She's done with the chemo stuff because God is working in a tremendous way. Can you bless the Lord this morning? Hallelujah. I want to be in a place where they pray when you get sick and see God work. You didn't hear what I said. I want to be at a place where when they pray, God is going to work and God is going to minister in a special way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know that if I have a problem, I can rely on the prayers of the saints of God. That God is going to come true for me. I want to be at such a place. I want to be at such a place. Who want to leave could leave. But I want to be at such a place. Are you here this morning? I want to be in a place when they pray. I know that God is going, God going to shrink through tumor. He's going to do this. He's going to do that because he's God. Hallelujah. So you are never alone in the battle. I might just get past the introduction. 
but no problem. I might barely get through the introduction. Hallelujah. You are never alone in the battle. Being alone is not a nice feeling. To be alone is not a nice feeling. I don't know if y'all uh, have ever been alone, but to be alone is not a nice feeling. You feel vulnerable when you are alone. But when somebody is with you, you feel emboldened, you feel empowered because somebody is there with you and you know that you are not alone. So being alone is not a pleasant feeling. Don't worry with some of the macho people who try to tell you that being al I like to be alone. In their quiet moments, they're hurting. In their quiet moments, they're hurting and they're hoping that somebody could show up. Somebody could come around. So being alone is not a pleasant experience. It is not a pleasant experience. But God says some wonderful things to us. One of the benefits of being a born again, uh, being born into the family of God through the divine providence of God's grace is salvation and security. Hallelujah. One of the benefits of being born into the family of God through the divine providence of God's grace is salvation and security. God not only would save you, but God gives you security. That he will take care of you. The steps of a righteous man or a righteous woman are ordered by the Lord. God is there with you if you are in relationship with Jesus. He's there with you. You might be going through stuff in your life. But God is there with you if you have a relationship with him. He is there with you. Oh bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. You don't see me in my private habitat because you don't live in my house. And sometimes you don't even know some of the battles that I face. My wife knows some of them. She doesn't know all of them because sometimes she will come to me and when she see me in a quiet moment and I'm not saying anything to anybody, she would come to me and say, share your thoughts with me. You know, that's how some wives operate. Eh? Share your thoughts with me. And I would say to her, you know, I just need this moment all by myself with the Lord. But she's concerned about what is happening. And she understands uh, the battles uh, that I face. She understands uh, the fight that I face. But I thank God that she's there to encourage me from time to time as I go forward and do what God wants me to do. But let me tell you something. When you know that God is on your side, when you know that you know that you know that Jesus is on your side and the enemy is raging and the enemy is angry and the enemy is mad, but you know that God is there with you, the ship is not going to sink even though the ship might become unstable, it might rise or from side to side and you might think that you are going under by the grace of God you cannot go under once Jesus is on the ship are you hearing me this morning once Jesus is on the ship you cannot go under the devil is a liar forget all the thing that he's whispering to you telling you that you are not going to make it the devil is a liar you are going to make it because if God be for us Oh, y'all ain't hearing me this morning. You're cranking me up. If God be for us, who can be against us? You might feel that you have no one to help in the battles life brings along your way. However, it is important for me to remind you that Jesus said, Hallelujah, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. My brothers and sisters, his words are true and they are se and, and secure. You can rely on the words of the Lord. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. Cousin Rufus might forsake you. Aunt Gilbertine might leave you. But Jesus will never leave you nor forsake you. He'll be there with you. He will be there with you. In the good times, he'll be there with you. In the bad times, he'll be there with you. When you got money, he's going to be there with you. When you don't have money, he's going to be there with you. When family members get upset with you and they walk out on you, Jesus says, I will not leave you nor forsake you nor abandon you. When your husband becomes tired of you and he wants out of the marriage, Jesus says, 
I will be there with you. Is there anybody in this house this morning? Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. I'll be there with you. I'll be there with you. I'll be there with you. Can you feel, can you recall the times when your back was against the wall and the devil and his agents thought that your life was over? Can you recall those moments when your backs were against the wall and the devil and his agents thought, Sister Kwamina, that your life was over? He hit you once. He hit you twice. He hit you three times. Then he came the fourth time and hit you and declared to you that it is over for you, Florence Kwamina. Your life is over, but the devil is a liar are you hearing me this morning you are still here because God has a purpose for your life hallelujah when God has a purpose for your life it doesn't matter what blow the enemy brings along your what what kind of hit you take from the devil if God has a purpose for your life you are going to survive every attack that the devil brings along your pathway because you are never alone in this battle Oh, tell the person next to you, you're not alone in this battle. They were preparing for your death. Recall the moments when your backs were against the wall and the enemy said it is over. It is not over until God says it is over. The enemy and his, and his agents were preparing to bury you with their words. Bury you with their words. I am so glad that I have a relationship with Jesus. That the negative words spoken over my life. I have the authority under God to cut them off and cancel them in the name of Jesus. So it doesn't matter what negative thing you say or they say. I have the authority because greater is he who lives inside of me than he who lives in the world. And when I declare that it is not going to prosper it will not prosper you gotta get radical in your relationship with the Lord and let the devil know that you are a child of God you're not a church member are you hearing me you are not a church member people get tied up with church membership and got no relationship with Jesus Christ you gotta be you gotta be in relationship with Jesus church membership even though it is important just for counting purposes your relationship with Jesus far transcends any membership in any local church I am glad that this church named Lighthouse I didn't carry nobody name Oh, y'all going to get the next week. All right. <laughs> I'm glad that this church named Lighthouse and is not a W. <laughs> y'all going to get it next week. Y'all slow. Y'all slow. John Wesley. Amen. Church carry Wesley's name. Wesley. I am glad that this church is named Cameron. It named Lighthouse. Lighthouse. Jesus says, you are the light of the world, the light of the world, the light of the world. Y'all yeah, yeah, yeah. don't crank me up this today. Please don't, don't crank me. Let me behave. Let me behave. I'm looking good this morning. I've lost, uh, uh, I've shed a lot of extra weight I used to carry and I'm, I'm looking good this morning. Hallelujah. I don't want to look like Orin, but I'm looking good this morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And so they were preparing to bury you with their words. You have to be in a position as a child of God to cancel some of these negative words people speak over your life. Because if you believe it, it is going to manifest itself in your life. The folk who said, I would not amount to anything. Coming up as a child, not amount to anything. Nobody in my family got a PhD. I am the only one and the first one. Juanita will be the second one. But I'm talking uh, coming in my generation. Nobody with anything like that. Or oh, he's not going to amount to anything. It motivated me to keep pushing. To keep pushing. Let the negative words that they speak over your life. Become a form of motivation. To cause you to fulfill your purpose. And accomplish uh, your reality in life. Are you hearing me this morning? You have to be at a place where you cut off all these negative things. People speak over your life. Yes, let them talk. My mother used to say that you can't stop the birds from flying. But you can stop the birds from building a nest in your head and in your life are you hearing me this morning people are going to talk because they got a mouth even a donkey and a dog got a mouth a jackass got a mouth too oh y'all oh, the pastor getting funny this is in the scripture 
Y'all all right this morning? Yes. Y'all ready for this kind of stuff? Yes. You think you can handle this thing? This thing is a little tight. Yes. <laughs> so they were preparing to bury you with the words. But just then, when they were preparing, they dug the hole. They had everything. They even had a, a pseudo priest to perform the last rites uh, or to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, looking for the glorious return of our great God and King. They're ready to, to perform the last rites and to lower you into, into the grave. But just then, when they were preparing to bury you, God came through and turned your situation around and astonished them that they couldn't believe that God would come true for you. They felt that your life was over, but with God, it is not over until God says it is over. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. God turned your situation around and they were astonished at the outcome. They will always be astonished at the outcome. They didn't think that we could buy a building for $1.5 million, a small church like this. Buy a building for $1.5 million. No, they can't get it. I heard the gossip on the road the other day. I hear they buy a building. I hear they buy a building. You know, the Rastafarian man would say, let bond them, 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 let it bond them, let it bond them. You know, can't say born, born, born. Can't say born, gotta be improper. Let bond them, let bond them. They thought I man would have go down, but let it bond them, let it bond them. Are you hearing me this morning, saints? You see, sometimes we concern ourselves with the negative people who are going no place and they want you to join their bandwagon. If you join that bandwagon, you're going to end up the same place that they are. But by the grace of God, I am not connecting to failure. I am connecting to success. When you connect with successful people, what is on them will rub off on you. And the strategies that they've employed to gain success, they will share it with you. And if you are smart enough to employ those same strategies in your life, I guarantee you that you are going to be successful Amen. hallelujah Amen. hallelujah hallelujah when Jesus is on our ship my brothers and sisters it doesn't matter how rough the waves and the wind of the enemy are our ship cannot sink cannot sink when Jesus is on our ship it doesn't matter how rough the waves and the wind of the enemy are our ship cannot sink cannot sink Hallelujah. You might be living by yourself, but you are never alone. Jesus walks with you. Eve, he walks with you. If you are his child, he is not derelict in his care of you. He is going to take care of you because he is not derelict in his care. He will take care of you. Wasn't it David who said, I was young, but now I'm old. I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his children begging for bread. If you are begging bread and your child begging bread, you need to check on your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Because if you're in relationship with the Lord, you might not have millions of and I trust God that you do have millions, but you might not have millions, but you don't have to be begging and you don't have to look bad and you don't have to be looking like the scum of the earth. You are a child of God. Rise up as a child of God. Behave like a child of God. Live like a child of God. Live like you know the Redeemer. Live like you know the Savior. Talk like you know the Savior. Act like you know the Savior. Hallelujah. You taught uh, sister. Uh, uh, Sister Maynard's mother was going to die in this service. The devil is a lie. It is not going to happen. Not in this atmosphere. Because God is here. It's not going to happen here. This is a place where life uh, takes place. Uh, hallelujah. 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 Glory be to God. The apostle Peter said, God cares for you. The text we read is a declaration of God's divine protection of those who made their calling and election. Sure, we were only able to deal with verse number one today. Their calling and election, sure. There are a number of things God is making available to the redeemed of the Lord. The passage is not for everybody. It is exclusively for those who are walking with God. For those who are walking with God. He says when you go through the fire, I'm going to be there with you. Because he is, this passage is so exclusive. It is only for the people of God, the children of God, the people of God who have made their calling and election. Sure, it's not for everybody. It's not for everybody. It's not for everybody. 
So the first thing the Lord said, number one, first thing he said, I might barely get into point number one. Let's go to point number one. The first thing that God says, if you go back to the passage, he says, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. Two things in that verse, in, the, in, in that statement. Fear not, for I have redeemed thee. Go to Isaiah 43 and verse number one. Let's, let's put the text back up very quickly. But now thus said the Lord that, that created, created thee, O Jacob, Jacob and, he, and he that formed thee. God is declaring in verse 1 his sovereignty over your life. That he is the sovereign Lord over your life and sovereign Lord over my life. Is he sovereign Lord over your life today? But now thus said the Lord that created thee, O Jacob. And Jacob in that text is not just a Jacob the man, it is Israel the nation. Are you hearing me this morning? It is the community God is talking about. He's not talking about Jacob the man. He's talking about, more importantly, Israel, the community, the nation, the people of God, the children of God who were born into the kingdom of God. And he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not. Fear Very not. Right. Amen. God is aware that fear comes to us every now and again. That we fear when we look at the future, we think about the future, and we think about the money that we have for retirement and all the other things. Fear sometimes will come to us. But if you are a child of God, he will take care of you. The Bible says, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the hearts of man. The things which God has prepared for those who love him. Oh, you are hearing me this morning. Your 401k might not be K enough. But if God is on your side, he will multiply the K. He will multiply the K and cause you to have more than enough to take care of you in your golden years of life. Are you still here? Fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I purchased you. I bought you with my own blood. And then he says, I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. The reason I had them sing that song, he knows my name. Some people don't know your name. But Jesus says, I know your name. I know your name. I know your name. I know your name. You go to some places and say, sir, or they say, madam. But when they call your name, it, it means something to you when they call your name. Come, sir, or come, madam. But when they call your name, come, hidden. They call your name. Come, Andre. They call your name. Come, Robert. They call your name. You know that they're talking about you. There's something about you that they're calling your name. God says, fear not. So one of the things God has done in this verse is to declare his unique sovereignty over his people and their destiny. Go back to the, to the, to the, to the script. So one of the things that God has done is to declare his unique sovereignty over his people and their destiny. Your future is secured in God. Oh, let me say it again because you'll hear what I said. Your future is not on treads, tread and needles. Your future is secure in God. Secure, secure in God. You don't have to worry about your future. Jesus says uh, the heathen thinks about the future and worry about the future. But your father knows what you need, what you stand in need of. Even before you open your mouth uh, and call, he knows what you stand in need of. Are you here this morning, saints? And so, he declares his sovereignty over our lives. And over our destiny. People might want to tell you that you are not going to get where you need to go. But the devil is a liar. God has already declared over your life uh, his sovereignty. And where you're going, God has already taken care of the way. He has removed them demons out of the way. He has removed some of the doubters out of the way. He has removed some of the naysayers out of the way. He has removed people that you should not be connecting to out of the way. He has placed within you a dislike for the association. And you got to move once God is doing that in your life. The moment God takes away that desire to connect with a certain set of people, you have to leave those folk alone and move with God. If you decide you're not going to listen to God, you must abide by the consequences of your choice. Yes. Hallelujah. God didn't call Lot. God called Abraham. But Lot saw wealth and riches in Abraham and he decided to 
tag along with his uncle. He had another uncle that he could have hang with, but he decided he is not hanging with a broke uncle. So he decided he's going to move with Abraham because he saw what God was doing in Abraham's life. And when you hang with people that God didn't connect you to, mischief and trouble and strife is going to come. It was true for Abraham and it is true for today. Not long after, Lot's servant and Abraham's servant fighting over land and fighting over pasture and fighting over water. And Lot is not telling them anything and Abraham is seeing this stuff. And the Bible says they were doing this in the presence of the heathen nations. That the people who are supposed to be the people of God fighting in front of ungodly people. What kind of example are you to the people who are looking to you for an example and you fighting and cussing and behaving just like the people out there? Are you still here this morning? Yes. And God said to Abram, you need to separate from Lot. You need to separate from Lot. And Abram came to Lot and said, Lot, look up. As, look, if you choose the right, I can choose the left. If you choose the east, I go west. You go north, I go south. And Lot looked up and he saw the well-watered plains of Sodom and Gomorrah, the well-watered watered plains. And he looked at the beautiful land down there and he said to Abram, even though he did not have the right to, to choose first, because God didn't call him, God called Abraham. By right, Abram had the, 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 the right to choose first. But he said, as a man, and he said, are you, you choose? Because God can choose for me. Oh, glory be to God. Sometimes we choose based on what we see but God goes beyond the physical and the natural thing because God can see into the future when you and I can't see into the future we choose based on our senses based on our orientation based on our education based on our association but God doesn't need any of that to choose for us are you hearing me this morning and when he had done all that he had to do God said to Abraham son Lift up thine eyes and look as far as you can see. All of this I am going to give to you and I'm going to give to your descendants after you. At the time Abraham didn't even got no children. And God is telling him, your children after you. Oh, I thank God for who he is. That God saw down the road that Abraham would have children even though the man had no children. And God said, lift up, your eye, lift, up, lift up thine eyes. As far as you can see, all this I will give to you. And God kept his promise. God kept his promise. And so God has declared his sovereignty, his unique sovereignty over his people and their destiny. Look at Revelation chapter 4 verse 11. Revelation chapter 4 and verse 11. Thou art worthy, O Lord. To receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created what? All things for whose pleasure? And for, and for thy, pleasure. thy pleasure they are and, and were created. The ones dead were created for his, his pleasure. The ones who are alive are created for God's pleasure. Tell your neighbor next to you, I am created for God's pleasure. I am created for God's pleasure. Hey, hallelujah, I am created for God's pleasure. Some people might not have any pleasure in you, but uh, that's all right. Uh, I am created for God's pleasure, for God's pleasure. You see, when you give human beings such authority over your life, they control you and control your destiny. But no human being will control me nor control my destiny. God is in charge of my destiny. Are you hearing me today? Because when they, when they control your destiny, you got to walk very circumspectly near them. You can't make no noise because whatever they give to you, they take it back. Yeah. Oh, you ain't hearing me this morning. It's all right. Tell you, move out. <laughs> move out. Against this background, God said, fear not, for I have redeemed you. Fear has the capacity to sabotage or completely avert God's purpose for our lives. If we are not set free from it, it will destroy us. If we're not set free from it, it's control. It will, it will mess with us. So fear has the capacity to sabotage or completely avert God's purpose for our lives if we are not set free from its control. Fear, fear, fear. You're in the house. You alone there. Nobody else there. Then you're hearing footsteps in the house. 
and suddenly you start getting worried. You know that you that nobody is inside in the house with you. And I trust that God is the only one there with you. So any footstep you hear ain't gotta be God. Or if you hear a lot of stuff, then you gotta you gotta rise up in the power of the Holy Ghost and say, Devil, if you're here, I'll bind you in the name of Jesus. And so fear has the capacity to sabotage or completely abort God's purpose for our lives if we are not set free from its control. I have seen what fear can do to the lives of people when it's in control of their lives. God's, God is saying, because I have redeemed you, you have no reason to fear. God said, because I have redeemed you, you have no reason to fear. I tell you, not every believer can handle this. God said, I have redeemed you. I purchased you with my blood. I bought you back from the slave market. And I have made you here and joined here of the kingdom of God. You have no reason to fear because you are redeemed by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. You're redeemed by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Why are you fearing? Why are you fearing? You need to tell fear, leave me alone. Leave me alone. 1 John chapter 4 and verse number 18. 1 John chapter 4 and verse number 18. Hear what the word says. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear had torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. If my love for the Lord Jesus Christ is perfect, I am not sharing my love for Jesus with anything else, anyone else. What it means is that God is first in my life. God is first in my life. My wife is second in my life. My children are third in my life. My church is fourth in my life. Are you hearing me? That is the order. There are pastors who put the church before their wife. And the next thing you know, they lose the church and lose their wife. Are you hearing me this morning? God is first in my life. My wife is second in my life. My children become number three in my life. And my church is number four in my life. That is the way God wants it to be. And I don't know how we get it convoluted that we put God first, which is right. But then we, we, we replace our wives or our spouses by the church. That is not the order. It is God, spouse, children, and then the church. Are you hearing me, my brothers and sisters? Yes. My, my, so there is no competition between my love for God and my love for my wife. There is no discussion on that aspect. God is first. He is number one. He is number one. He is number one. And as I keep him as number one, the scripture says, uh, there is no fear in love, uh, but perfect love. My number one love uh, is God, is Jesus. And the Bible says, uh, but perfect love. When my love for him is perfect, the Bible says, uh, that love would cast out every fear. Because fear had torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. I am sharing this love with other people that I should give to God. He is not first in my life. Other people are first in my life. Other people are first in my life. That's why when friends and family come, they come to church with me. They ain't keeping me home. Oh, you're not hearing me this morning. When friends and family visit, they are not good enough to keep me at home. I am in the house of God. You're coming. And I got clothes can fit them. When they say, well, I ain't walk with no church clothes. I run on the road to Kmart. <laughs> I just got on the road to Kmart. I got the Salvation Army. Trip store, go get them something to wear. Are y'all hearing me this morning? Oh, I ain't got nothing. I'll find something for you to wear. What size you wearing? Your size 40? Oh, you got no problem. I'll find something for you. What you, you, you shirt you wearing? 17 and a half, 25 cuff? I'll find something for you. You are going to get something because nobody's staying in this house. Uh, be going to church. If you're sick and you can't move, that's a different story. But I even get radical at that point. You come to the house of God and the people of God there and the anointing of God come in that place. God is going to touch you and reverse your situation. When some of our family members come, you know, I can't come to church today because they're in tongue. I got to entertain them. I got to do this for them. Listen to me. 
God is watching, he is watching, he's watching, he's watching, he's observing the way you're treating him, the way you're treating him. The word says, don't forsake the assembly of yourself, especially when you see the day approaching, you need to be in the house of God. Why you need to be in the house of God? Because when we are together, when we are together, what happened this morning is going to happen in the presence of the Lord and you're going to see God manifesting himself and touching people. You don't see that in your house and the same, the atmosphere here is different from the atmosphere in your house because when two or three are gathered together you in your house by yourself with some of your ungodly family and the presence of God is not there but when you come together in the presence of the Lord with God's people his presence is going to be here Amen. hallelujah how many y'all gonna catch the bus tomorrow tomorrow's holiday y'all all right <laughs> So there is no fear because fear had torment. He that feared is not made perfect in love. When the Israelites were terrified by the Egyptians who were pursuing them while they were going to the promised land, Moses, the servant of the Lord, said to the children of Israel in Exodus 14, 13 to 14. Please go there quickly. Exodus 14, 13 to 14. He says to them, and Moses said unto, said unto the people, what? Fear ye not. Fear ye not. Do what? Stand, Stand still. still. Don't do anything. Just pause. Just chill. Just drink, just drink yourself some fruit juice or drink yourself some water. Just eat a Jamaican patty or just get yourself a, a slice of bread or get yourself some manna. Just enjoy yourself or just feed upon a piece of jerk chicken or get yourself some palau. Pilau, which is tr Trinidad story, Pilau, you know, we call it cook-up rice in Ghana. They call them Pilau in Trinidad, where they mix peas and other things inside. But, you know, or get yourself some, some cassava leaf <laughs> from Sierra Leone. You get yourself some cassava leaf stew from Sierra Leone. Just take, just take it easy. Fear ye not. Do what? Stand still and do what? And see the yes. salvation of the Lord. Lord. Which he will show it to you today. For, For the Egyptians whom he have seen. Ye shall see them again no more. God says the problem that you have, the problem, the situation, the challenge, the difficulty, the circumstances that you're facing, God said, I'm taking care of them today. I am taking care of every one of them today. You are not going to see them anymore because I am taking care of them. Verse number 14. The Lord shall do what? Fight for you. And what you must do? And he shall, and he shall hold, hold your, your peace. peace. God says, uh, the Lord, the Lord, the sovereign Lord uh, is going to fight the battle with the enemy. Those who who uh, coming up against it, God says, I'm going to fight them. You don't need to fight with them. I am going to fight them. I am going to fight them. And ye shall hold your peace. All I got to do is pause and see God bring the victory. That's all I got to do. I ain't got to cuss with them. I ain't got to fight with them. I ain't got to get into no argument with them. I ain't got to get into no bickering with them. I don't even answer them. I don't have to say nothing. All I need to do is to stand still and watch God work this thing out. And watch God work it out. Watch God work it out. Watch God work it out. Watch God. We don't give God the opportunity to work for us. Sometimes we, we want to put our hands inside here, get carnal and get inside and start scratching and digging and biting. And God says, you stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Amen. 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 There are four reasons why we should not fear. And we'll be done. Point number one. We can't go beyond point number one. There are four reasons why we should not fear as a child of God. What's the, what's the subject we're dealing with today? What's the subject we're dealing with? You are never alone in the battle. You are never alone in the battle. And so there are four reasons why we should not fear. Number one, fear does not advance the cause of Christ. Fear does not advance the cause of Christ. When the realtor told me the price of the building and he said, I think this is above your pay grade and, and I don't think y'all can handle it. I said to the real, realtor that the days of miracles are not over. Are you hear what I said? When he said it to me, my first set of words to him, the days of miracles are not over. Amen. And he said, well, let's, 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 let's pray because some strange things happen through prayer. And God came through. Yeah. Oh, God, God, wait, wait, wait. Y'all here? Yeah. I said, and God came through. Yeah. 
So fear does not advance the cause of the kingdom or advance the cause of Christ. Fear will abort everything that God wants to do. Because when we become fearful, we can't do anything that God wants us to do. Look at Matthew chapter 25 and verse 24 through 26. Then he which had, had received, received one, one talent, talent came, came and, and said, said Lord, Lord, I knew, I knew thee that, that thou art a hard man, man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not strawed. And I was what? And I was what? I was afraid and went and did what? And hid the talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast thine. And look what the Lord said to this fellow. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest that I reap where I sowed not, and gathered where I have not strawed. God said, You're wicked. Number one. I give you gifts and talents and abilities that you can use and you decide because of fear you are not going to use the gifts and the talents and the abilities that I have given to you. And now you come back accusing me that I am a hard taskmaster, a reaping where I've not sown and all this kind of stuff. God said, I can take this what I give to you and give it to the one that had five talents. Are you hearing me? Fear does not advance the kingdom or the cause of God. His responsibility was to advance the kingdom of God. But because of fear, he decided to sit on his talent. I did not know Sister Monet can sing jazz. Until I heard her singing to Sister Ray on her birthday. And I said, I went to Sister Monet. I said, I know that you got all of this little stuff hidden inside of you. You need to get this stuff out. Are you hearing me? God will bless us with, with talents and abilities. Are you hearing me this morning? If you sit on the talent, God can take it and pass it on to somebody else because you're not advancing the kingdom or the cause of the kingdom. Number two. The second, the second reason why we should not fear. Fear, fear will, will abort do what? your promise. Fear will abort your promise. What God says he will do for you because of your fear, it will abort the promises of God in your life. It will abort the promises of God in your life. Go to Numbers chapter 13 and verse 33. And there we, we saw, saw the giants, what? The giants, the, giants, the sons of Anak, Anak which, which come, come of, of the giants. giants and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. And so we were in their sight. Fear aborting the promise of God for them. God said to Abram, I'm giving you the land of Canaan. That you're going into this place. That the favor of God will be upon you. They saw when Moses sent them to spy out the land. They saw these giants. And they came back and they said to Moses, we saw these giants and we appear like grasshopper to these people. Oh, look how they're putting themselves down. Look how they're putting themselves down. Now, they were wonderfully and faithfully made in the image of God. Now they're equating themselves to grasshopper. Are you understanding this? They are calling themselves now grasshopper, impotent, incapable, not good enough, and all this kind of stuff. And Moses decided not to pay any attention to them. Joshua and Caleb said to the people, we can take this place. Because if God is with us, we are going to take the place. Go to the third one. So the third fear. reason why we should not fear, fear, fear will, will cause, cause you to, you to what? From the enemy. To run from the, the enemy. enemy. Fear will cause you to run from the enemy, run from the problem, and not deal with the situation before you. First Samuel chapter 17 verses 9 going down. If he be able to fight with me, these and are the words of Goliath, the Philistine from Goth. He said, if he be able to fight me, and to kill me, then will we be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then shall ye be our servants and serve us. And the Philistines said, I defy. This is a funny word, I defy. When somebody stands in your presence and telling you, I don't care who you are, you are nobody. I'm not afraid of you. I am defying you. I am telling you, you could say what you want. I am going to do what I want to do. That is what Goliath was saying. I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. When Saul and all Israel heard those words of the Philistines, what, what happened to them? The entire nation, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. 
Fear is aborting their promise and all that God wanted to do for them. But I thank God that there is always a David in the wing. There is always a David in the wing who said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine to speak against the army of the living God? I am going to take care of him. David said, you come to me with your spear, but I am coming to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. It makes a difference when you come in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Go to the last reason. So fear will cause you to run from your enemy. So Israel ran from the enemy. Are you running from your enemy? Are you running from some of the things that should shape you and mold you? That you should confront? Number four, and we'll be done. I ain't get number four. Please go back. Fear, no, fear, fear will, will do what? Torment. Fear will torment you. When fear is in your life and you are fearful, you are tormented by the fear. The fear is tormenting you. You can't do anything for yourself. In the Proverbs, in the, in, in, in the paraphrase Bible, the, the, the way the paraphrase Bible describes fear in Proverbs, it says the lazy man says a tiger is at the door. So he ain't going out. He looks outside, he says a, a tiger is there. He's all mental, he's all mental. There ain't no tiger at the door. But because of fear, fear says to him, a tiger is at the door. So he is not going outside to get anything. So he's inside of the house all the time. Is there anybody like that here? Fear, God, you, you ain't even moving. You can't even turn a straw. You can't do anything. Fear will torment you. First John 4 and 18. We looked at that verse early on. There is no fear in love. Perfect love. But perfect love. Cast out, cast out fear. Because, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. What are we speaking about today? You are never alone in the battle. And the first words that God said to his people, fear not, fear not. And God has given us four reasons why we should not fear as a people of God. We need to effectuate this word. We need to practice this word. We need to put this word into our daily living so that it can bless us and cause us to be all that God wants us to be. Just leave those four things up for those who are very fast in writing so they can get it. I mean slow in writing so that they can get it. But God is a good God, my brothers and sisters. Doesn't matter what the enemy says or does. If you're a child of God, you got no reason to fear. He will take care of you. He will take care of you. He will take care of you. Of you. I can't go to point number two, so I'm just giving you point number one in this sermon series. And there are maybe ten different points coming up in this sermon series. So we've been together for a long time. God is a good God. He is a good God. Hallelujah. Let's pray. If fear is troubling you this morning, just lift your hands and say, God, I surrender this fear to you. Just lift your hands. If, if fear is part of your challenge, God is saying to you, fear not, fear not, fear not. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, for every person who is troubled by the spirit of fear, we bind and cast that spirit out in the name of Jesus. There will have no bearing, no future impact on the lives of your people. We come to you because our love for you is number one. And because our love for you is number one, fear has no part in our lives. Fear has no part in what we do. And so, Father, today I pray everyone who is bound by the spirit of fear, I cut them loose from it in the name of Jesus and set them free by the power of the Holy Ghost. God, whatever the doctor said, fear is not going to, 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 to control their lives or their destiny, their destiny. You, Lord, are the sovereign Lord over our lives and over our destiny. We ask today that you continue to minister to your people, keep them strong, keep them grounded, keep them in the word, so that when the enemy attacks, they are going to use the word to defeat the plans and the purpose of the enemy. Let your people have a great week this week, Father, and bless every home represented here. And to you, we give all the praise, the thanks, the honor and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. And praise God. Tell the person next to you, God bless you. Ha-ha.